Not only is Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis's campaign flailing, but apparent infighting is destroying his never back down super PAC. Now, leaders of Ron DeSantis's never back down super PAC met privately last Tuesday to basically hash out a strategy for how to fight back against Nikki Haley, who has been experiencing a little bit of a rise in the polling. So let's give you a sense of what we're talking about here. If you look at this graph, it'll show you that DeSantis's support is falling, which you can see represented by the pink line. Okay, that's DeSantis and how he's performing in the polls. Now, Nikki Haley is actually moving up as represented by the green line. If you're having difficulty seeing it, it's because <laughs> it's irrelevant and minimal to say the least. So you have two people who are losing the Republican primary at epic proportions, but they're deciding to like fight one another when in reality, let's go back to the graph. Who's at the very top right now by a lot? Yeah, that purple line that's represented by Donald Trump. So look, fighting each other for second place seems a little goofy to me. But nonetheless, let's give you more details on this story. So during a super PAC meeting, Jeff Rowe, who is the top consultant for the super PAC and longtime DeSantis confidant, Scott Wagner, actually got into a pretty heated debate. So here's how it went. Jeff Rowe said, you have a stick up your ass, Scott. And then Scott Wagner responded, why don't you come over here and get it? Okay. So Wagner then rose from his chair and had to be quickly restrained to fellow board members or by fellow board members. And um, it's unclear what exactly led to that kind of buildup and that kind of conflict. Uh, but there has been tension for a while, as reported by NBC News. The infighting represents an escalation in the long running war between Never Back Down's professional political operatives and DeSantis's Tallahassee based inner circle over who is to blame for the governor's failure to compete effectively with front runner Donald Trump for the Republican nomination. So DeSantis and his wife Casey have been among those increasingly upset over Never Back Down's leadership and their strategies. For instance, earlier this year, the PAC publicly posted this memo ahead of a debate that DeSantis had with other Republican candidates. Um, and it was embarrassing for DeSantis. So the super PAC supporting him had posted a trove of sensitive material, including strategic advice and research on his rivals only days before the first debate of the 2024 campaign. The advice was at times so basic that it could come off as condescending, reminding the Florida governor to talk about his family, for instance, and prescribing how many times he should attack President Biden and the news media. Now, keep in mind that Campaigns, the DeSantis campaign isn't allowed to coordinate with the super PACs. So the reason why the super PAC posted this memo publicly online was to ensure that Ron DeSantis can see it because they can't just hand it to him. That would be coordinating with him. You get what I'm saying? But I do you guys think he's that dumb that he wouldn't know to like mention his family or Yes, yeah. you must now attack Democrats and Joe Biden. I mean, maybe maybe he is. I, I don't know, John, what, what do you think? Uh, I mean, he's not good at this. I think that some rudiment, like going back to basics might not be the worst idea. Uh, I do like, you explained well why it has to be done publicly. It's always funny when that happens, these little shortcuts that they use to get around the coordination thing. I don't know, do you remember the McConnelling thing that happened years ago? So obviously- well, you know, if you're running one of these super PACs, then you would love to have high quality footage of the candidate that you're supporting to use, but they can't film it for you because that would be coordination. So uh, Mitch McConnell just put out a bunch of videos publicly of him like doing this. No, oh my God. So that that could then be used by the super PACs. He wasn't using it for anything. There was no text, there was nothing. It was a raw video of him like, so that's how they get around these incredibly minor limitations on coordination between super PACs and the candidates. So this is comparatively maybe not that damning. What's more damning is the reality of the race because Ron, like we were saying early on that Ron DeSantis was not this good, not that good at this. That the idea that he was passing like homophobic bills and stuff, like oh my god, maybe maybe he really is like another Trump. No, that 
like attacking like vulnerable groups in society as a Republican with an overwhelming you know amount of political power in Florida is super easy. Taking out other Republicans face to face, having to defend yourself is comparatively difficult. And he is a little weenie. That's who he is, that's who he will always be. There's no advice you could write down in a memo that's gonna fix weenie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so the weenie not happy with the never back down super PAC. And so all of a sudden, this leads to the creation of an entirely new super PAC for DeSantis called the Fight Right Inc. That's the name of the new super PAC, okay? And their strategy is to basically keep attacking Nikki Haley since she's the one rising in the polls. Which again, you guys are competing for second place, but okay, fine. And they released this attack ad against Nikki Haley just yesterday. Let's watch. We know her as Crooked Hillary, but to Nikki Haley, she's her role model, the reason she ran for office. I often say that the reason I got into politics was because of Hillary Clinton. She said, and that's the reason you absolutely have to. And I walked out of there and I said, I'm running for office. Hillary Clinton is actually the reason. You write about her being a big inspiration for you in terms of a leader. She is actually the reason that I made the jump. <laughs> Fight writing is responsible for the content of this advertising. I think that that could be a, a, a pretty effective ad if you're looking uh -huh. to make it to second place. Which, by the uh, way, Ron DeSantis is still in second place, but again, he's dipping in the polls. Yeah, exactly. It is. It's so hilarious to watch them like viciously duking it out for an embarrassingly distant second place spot. Yeah. I mean, what what at the end of the day is really the point of that? Like, like not only do you not win, but as the second place person, you draw the most ire from Donald Trump and his base. Deron DeSantis should be fighting to get third or fourth at this point, because he definitely ain't gonna win. And at least that way he might have a future in right wing politics. Whereas now he's just damaging himself among the Republicans. That's perhaps a good ad to run against Nikki Haley. Um, I, I mean, look, I would normally be inclined to say that I don't think they're really fighting for the same sort of voter. I think that Ron DeSantis is trying to pitch himself as a Donald Trump person, but that can't work because they, they love Donald Trump too much. Whereas Nikki Haley is trying to pitch herself as effectively like a Dick Cheney, basically, mm -hmm, like a George mm -hmm. W. Bush. But the thing is, I do think there's a significant portion of the Republican primary electorate that is just looking for who can beat Trump at this point. And I think they're willing to jump ship if there's a sign that that can work. But the issue is that they really are just hitting each other. Don't write down in a memo how many times you're supposed to criticize Joe Biden. Write down how many times you're supposed to criticize Donald Trump and that number is infinite. You need to keep hitting him and it's probably not gonna work, but it's your only chance of peeling off his significant percentage of the base. Yeah, I agree. If you're going to deploy the Vivek Ramaswamy strategy of running as Trump light, well, then you're going to perform as well as Vivek Ramaswamy has been performing. Um, he hasn't even cracked third place. He's still, I think, fourth place in some polls. But nonetheless, uh, Trump is Trump. Running as Trump light makes no sense if the Republican voters can just vote for Trump. I think Nikki Haley's strategy could be a little more successful, but I am amused at how difficult it is for these more traditional neocons in this election. And I think moving forward in future elections, because there has been a bit of a change in the Republican Party. There's been a bit of a realignment. Um, even when it comes to US foreign policy in regard to Israel, it's amazing to see growing divisions among Republican voters and Republican conservative members of the media. Some want to be anti-interventionists, some don't agree with supporting Israel militarily. Whereas the more traditional neocon wing of the Republican Party absolutely wants to provide cover for Israel and support them no matter what. So I'm so curious to see how this all plays out. But one thing that is crystal clear, Donald Trump is leading that field by a lot. No one even comes close. We have Joe Biden insisting on running for reelection, despite poll after poll showing that he's very likely to lose to Donald Trump. And he's simultaneously running a campaign that fear mongers about Trump dismantling our democracy and democratic process. So if Biden is real about that, if the Democratic Party genuinely does see Donald Trump as a threat to our democracy, 
maybe they should act like it and maybe they should allow for a robust Democratic primary. Somehow I doubt that's gonna happen, but we'll see. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.